Happy Thursday. Welcome to the Prime Real Estate Network Podcast. I'm your host, Rick Davis. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I urge you to do so at Prime Real Estate Rick. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in residential or commercial real estate anywhere in the great state of Texas, but especially here in our lovely city of Houston, I invite you to reach out to me directly on Instagram at Prime Real Estate Rick. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you this week. I have a very special co-host sitting in for the Texas Real Estate King, Mr. Larry W. Brooks. And I want to thank Miss Tatiana Hall for being my co-host this week. Thank you so much for your time. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. Everyone, we miss you, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> everyone who watches the Prime Real Estate Network podcast will recognize Miss Hall. She is Prime Real Estate Network alumni. She has been on the Prime Real Estate Network. And if you have not seen her appearance, please visit the Prime Real Estate Network channel on YouTube and check out the Morgan. Link Queen because it was absolutely great to have her on and her energy was absolutely infectious. I cannot and we cannot start today's episode without giving our heartfelt condolences and apologies and let them know that we are with everyone who was affected by the tragedy down in Uvalde, Texas. As fellow Texans, we reach out to you all. We present our prayers. We want you to know that we are supporting you all. If anyone in our audience has been affected, just know we are all out here with you to work this out together. And we want to definitely send out our heartfelt condolences to everyone down in Uvalde. We have a very, very exciting episode planned. We have a fine gentleman that is sitting in with us as our guest, and I would like to introduce him at this time. He is not only one of the finest real estate educators here in Greater Houston, he also served as a mentor and an inspiration for so many real estate professionals here in the Greater Houston area and all over the great state of Texas. He is the co-owner and co-founder of JPAR, the Sears Group of Houston. I'm carving some time out of his very busy schedule. Thank you so much for sitting in with us, Mr. Chris Sears. How you doing, sir? Wonderful. It's an honor to be here with you guys. You Absolutely. Know, no, this was um, an episode that I've been anxiously anticipating, man. Um, when Mr. Brooks told me that we were able to gain a commitment from Mr. Sears to sit in with us, this was something that I had always been looking forward to because mm. you come with quite the reputation as a real estate educator and leader. And today's episode, I'm hoping that members of our audience can get some of your knowledge as far as building a first class team. So for our audience, could you just share a little bit about your real estate journey, how you built your team and what it is that you guys do over at the Sears Group? Uh, that's a great question. So um, I won't go all the way back all 26 <laughs> years. Um, I'll tell you some brief highlights. I, I started the business in 1996. and. Um, uh, first year, I made about $100,000 part-time going to college, and I realized this was my gig. So uh, here I am 26 years later. Uh, I ran my first real estate office uh, starting in uh, the year 2000. Ah. Uh, ran a Keller Williams office and um, started coaching agents in 2001 mm -hmm. in teams and growth and strategy. Um, since then, I have run several real estate organizations, but my passion is helping people build. Um, uh, I think this business is so phenomenal because it gives us the freedom to build a brand for ourselves. Uh, even if we don't have all the education, if, if, if we have the muster and the courage to get out, get out and attempt to build a brand for ourselves and, and manifest the vision we have in our mind and we give it our all each day, we can build whatever we want in this industry. And I saw that, and I actually experienced it for myself. And my wife did the same. We're we're partners. She's the other co-founder, and and, uh, and and we actually built a team together, and we sold it. Um, oh, wow. So I'm happy to talk to you about teams today because I am actually living proof that you can actually build a real estate brand for yourself. It doesn't have to be a brokerage, and it's a sellable book of business. Mm -hmm. That's what. Jen and I did in 2008 and 2009 and then we started a consulting firm helping people do the same thing and that's really what our brokerage is all about so since 2001 I've coached probably in the neighborhood of 2000 or so teams and um, and not only in Houston or Texas but uh, I'm doing it all over the country right now uh, because it's a passion I want to empower people that's why we're this Absolutely. empower shirt um, and, and the thing about that is, is people sometimes get in their own head. Wow. 
And so I'll talk a little bit about that today, but I, I, I'm speaking from experience, not just from reading a book about getting in your own head and <laughs> how to get past that and how right. to move past those uh, false barriers that you set up for yourself. And so uh, 77,000 transactions or so later um, and 16 billion in commercial, here I am. And I'm doing what I love and I think I'm living my purpose. You know, it's outstanding. I thank you so much because there's so many members of our audience need to hear that. Ms. Hall, me and you were talking before we started recording about some of the challenges as far as team building. Mm -hmm. From in your mortgage practice, what have you found are some of the things that can be um, challenging mm -hmm. as far as team building? And what kind of things do you feel like people need to keep in mind when they're filling out their team? So I think, you know, one of the biggest challenges, at least I'm facing, right, is understanding how to express my direction mm -hmm. right and what it is that I want from right my team it's in my mind but how do I get it out there so that other people see what I see right and I share that vision in the same way so they share it with me and Chris when you meet with other business leaders and real estate leaders and professionals do you find that these type of challenges is something that people consistently ask you about as far as needing your advice and if so what type of small tips do you give professionals like Ms. Hall as far as what to look for when they're out there building their teams? Yeah, so uh, what you're experiencing comes up a lot. Uh, how, do I, how do I truly communicate my vision to my team to get them to adopt that same vision as their own and help them feel that they're a part of growing this vision that is bigger than each of you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because each of you contributes to that vision but each of you has to buy into the vision to truly contribute wholeheartedly to that vision. And the leader may have this thing in their head. They, they know that what they want and they know where, where they, they, they can see the organization going. But each individual in that organization that's a contributor to manifesting that vision has their own perspective. Mm -hmm. And their perspective is colored not only by the the person they are, but also by the role that they play within that team or that organization. So the same way we're sitting here, we all have different perspectives of the same event that's happening mm -hmm. based on where we're sitting and based on our role. Uh, those guys back there, different perspective than mm -hmm. I have, different perspective than you have. Mm -hmm. And so one of the best ways to be able to uh, articulate your vision and get buy-in is by asking them first what their vision is mm -hmm. and what they why are they here and what do they see as their strengths and what are their contributions and believe it or not then you can follow it up with and what do you think your biggest road roadblocks are going to be to accomplishing that vision once you have that information that's like a needs analysis you are now coming to them where they are in order that you together may meet their needs mm -hmm. through the manifestation of this vision of an organization that's being a leader right mm -hmm. so your role your perspective is colored by the fact that you are looking at it from the lens of a leader they're looking at it from the lens of being a contributor and sometimes and by the way we all have blind spots right mm -hmm. every last one of us has yeah. blind spots and and so that allows you to ha garner their perspective to see your blind spots. Wow. Mm. And from there, if you're humble and you're hungry and you're competent, just like the people you hire, just like the people you bring on, then you're gonna grow together. And, and when you do that, now you start to understand, oh, I didn't see it that way. Oh mm. my gosh, this is, this, is new, this is new for me. So that's the first bit of advice I would give anybody. If they're trying to build a team or an organization and they need to articulate the vision, First, you have to have clarity about your vision, but then you have to have clarity about the vision that each person from their perspective has bought into in their own eyes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, because you mentioned earlier that you provide um, consultative services as well. And I want to be clear for the audience. Do you um, provide education, resources for just members of the Sears Group? Or can other business leaders and other entrepreneurs with their own organizations schedule time, pick mm -hmm. your brain, and take advantage of your expertise and knowledge as well? Now, uh, that's, that's a great question. It's always been that I'll talk to anybody and I'll <laughs> contribute nice. to anybody. Um, it doesn't matter if you're at my organization or not. Um, 
I, I trust the process. Uh, those that are a match will show up and those that aren't won't. Um, I'm wholeheartedly focused on making a difference in other people's lives. Right. It doesn't matter what company you're with. The only thing that matters is that you come from a place of contribution into this world. If you're not, and you're just a taker, then I'm not going to cast my pearls your way. Exactly. Um, and so from that perspective, uh, my wife wouldn't want me to say this necessarily, but I'm open to anybody, um, mm -hmm. and I'll give my time and energy to anybody that, uh, that will take it and use it to multiply whatever vision they have for themselves. And for those members of our audience that may be at home, in their office, checking us out on YouTube while they go through morning emails, how would they go about scheduling time with you? Is there an online resource? Should they give you a call? Because I want to make sure everyone in our audience who hears your message and is moved by it can take action right now. Sure. Because this is the type of thing as we almost are in nearly the third quarter. Now, it's amazing how quickly this year is going by. Oh, yeah. I want to put everyone in our audience in a position to actively take control of their career and where they want their career to go today. Because one of the great things about having this platform that I work on with Mr. Brooks is being able to open up our audience to those knowledgeable professionals that they can go to for more of a nuanced conversation about yeah. more specific needs. And a lot of times, especially with real estate marketing, real estate education, you, they give you more of a um, broader perspective. Yeah. For those leaders out there that want to schedule some time to learn how to best build their team, how can they go about doing that? Now, so the first thing, uh, to get on my schedule, uh, <laughs> there, there is an email. They yes, can go yeah. to onboarding at searsgrp.com. Okay. That's onboarding at searsgrp.com. Uh, they can hit, hit us up on Instagram at the Sears Group. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook is Sears Group MKTG. Mm -hmm. In other words, Sears Group Marketing. Um, the the and they can go straight to my my personal Facebook. Go to Messenger and just hit me up. And that's Chris Sears. Uh, so it, any of those places they can get a, they can get to me. Mm -hmm. um, literally getting on my schedule. The best way to do that is onboarding because it goes straight to my scheduling, um, and that's that's something that'll get them right on my schedule within the next couple of weeks. Man, I appreciate you for sharing that information and everyone in the audience. Please take advantage of. Chris being so generous mm -hmm. with his time and contact information. Reach out to this gentleman and schedule some time and get on his calendar as soon as possible. I appreciate you being so transparent and candid as far as advice and giving us the benefit of some of your experience and knowledge. We're going to take a short break to hear from our sponsors, but I want to hear a little bit about your background and your life before you became a business owner, if you don't mind. You guys want to stay tuned for this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank everyone for tuning into the Prime Real Estate Network podcast. Ms. Tatiana Hall and myself will be right back after we hear from our sponsors. So you stay right there. I'm serial entrepreneur Larry W. Brooks, and I'd like to personally invite you to take a closer look at the Pure Hustle clothing brand, along with several books that I've authored to take entrepreneurs, small business owners to the next level of their business. So please take a look at shoplwb.com. How do you survive? Three years ago, I set out on a mission to create the blueprint for how we could go into our own neighborhoods, buy blocks, renovate them, and combat the negative effects of gentrification. Today, that vision is reality. Our project is located in the heart of the historic Lyons Avenue Business District in Fifth Ward of Houston. Lyons Avenue was once a thriving black business district with businesses and commerce. However, after desegregation, that all changed. Now, we are recreating that legacy. These buildings are 100 years old. We just gave them a new life. This house was built in 1925 and was vacant for years. It's now a podcast studio and is rented out as an event space for everything from engagement parties to TV commercials, music videos. City council even had meetings here. We've had birthday parties. We've had baby showers. And the five to $10,000 a month generated in this building Welcome back to the Prime Real Estate Network Podcast. I'm your host, Rick Davis. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please be sure to do so at Prime Real Estate Rick. If you're a real estate professional, an aspiring real estate professional, or currently studying towards your real estate license, and you want to learn more about the Brooks and Davis real estate family, please visit our website at brooksanddavis.com, schedule a consultation, and you'll have an opportunity to learn everything you need to know about Brooks and Davis real estate firm and how we support our agents and ensure success. 
My co-host today is Miss Tatiana Hall, better known the world over as the Mortgage Link Queen. How are you doing, Queen? I'm doing so well. So well. Thank We're getting you. such a positive response in the chat. So I want to thank you so much for being a co-host. Could you please just share with our audience what's been going on in the world of the Mortgage Link Queen since your last appearance on the Prime Real Estate Network podcast? Awesome. So you know my brokerage, LA Top Broker, we are expanding and expounding. We actually just got licensed officially in Louisiana Uh-oh. and Georgia. Yes. Okay, so we're already in the California and Texas markets as well. Um, and we do have an upcoming event. Well, I have an upcoming event mm-hmm. with the Texas uh, Association of Real Estate Brokers, better known as TAYRAB. So we'll be having a conference June 9th through 11th. And you know, I love YRD. Yes, yes, So yes. we will be hosting the official after party on June oh, the 9th. Boy. So if you guys make it out, it's yes. going to be grown, sexy, and networking at its finest. Just to speak <laughs> of YRD, because um, your group, and I want to commend you for getting involved and being a leader in that aspect of the real estate community. Just talk about how fulfilling it is to be a part of YRD and being able to not just work with but share experiences with so many like-minded professionals and entrepreneurs. Listen, it's camaraderie at its finest, right? Because as you're building and as you're growing and especially doing something different, right? You need a support group around you, people who understand what it feels like, what you're going through and family and friends. They may be wonderful, but they may not always understand. So to actually have that solid network around you, you guys are, you know, have the same goals in place, trying to get to the same mission and get that achieved and accomplished. And of course, right, just building your sphere of influence even further. Further, yeah. it's, it's it's like building a brother and sisterhood. Seriously, I know. I yeah. thank you so much because your energy, and like I've told you this before, your energy is so infectious, and it's so it brings so many people in that I urge everyone, if you are in the position where you would like to speak to a mortgage professional for about commercial loans, residential loans, and you feel like you're ready to make that step, reach out to Miss Hall today. Miss Hall, how can they reach out to you directly right now to? tap you tap in with you and learn more about getting qualified for a residential commercial mortgage right now um the best way is to you can find all my contact information at www.mortgagelinkqueen.com and all my social media handles are mortgage link queen thank you so much i would like to take this time to reintroduce our guest this week this fine gentleman dropped so many gems in the first half of his interview that if you did not or were not tapped in in time to see the entire episode, be sure to check out the debut this Sunday at 6 p.m. Central at the Prime Real Estate Network YouTube channel. But our guest this week is not only a real estate innovator, leader, coach, he is the co-founder and the co-owner of J. Parr Real Estate, the Sears Group of Houston, Mr. Chris Sears. Thank you so much for sitting there with me, brother. Um, I just don't know where to start back with the interview because you were so enlightening and so informative in the first half of the interview, but I want to make sure I give the audience an opportunity to learn more about Chris Sears, the businessman and entrepreneur, because Mr. Brooks and I and Ms. Hall, and I'm sure you can appreciate this as well, is that when people meet you on a regular basis, sometimes they may not necessarily have the opportunity to appreciate the evolutionary path. Mm. that you had to travel to become the business owner and entrepreneur that they meet the day that they meet you. So could you just for our audience give them a little background as far as what you did before you became a business owner and what was the tipping point catalyst and motivation that caused you to jump into this jump into this wild river and swim upstream? Oh my goodness. Uh, so uh, I'm a swimmer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, that's well. I mean, so I've been in the business since I was 21, right? Absolutely. So, um, getting into the business—that's a little bit of a story. Uh, so, the first half of my life, I can say I've been in in the business a little more than half my life. Absolutely. The first half of my life, I spent destroying myself. Um, I I. Uh, I'm going to get real open here. I, I asked him if he was ready for this answer. Absolutely. Um, but I, uh, I was a gang leader at 13 years old. Uh, I was a crip. And um, I grew up in Sharpstown. And uh, I, my dad was a drug dealer. And my mom was a drug addict. 
And by 13 years old, I thought the way of the world was to get mine. Right. And I was very violent. Um, very violent person. And, um, and so by 17, I was running drugs through three clubs. I had uh, people stealing cars for me and, and running guns right here in Houston. Uh, two weeks after my 17th birthday, I was in a high-speed chase with HPD and on, a, on my way to rob a liquor store. And um, I got arrested. The, um, the time I spent in jail, which, by the way, mm. uh, I got acquitted later on. Mm. Um, but the time I spent, I made a decision in my life at 17 years old that I wasn't going to be destroying myself anymore in that way and that I was not going to be violent and uh, and so I started that path of deciding I, I basically went back to my gang and I said look y'all got to jump me out do whatever you need to do but I'm out but if you're smart you'll follow me out because we're not doing anything but destroying ourselves and the people around us this is stupid we can use our talent for something else and so every everyone in the gang followed me out except one and he just got out of prison about six years ago. You know, it was so powerful, and I want to thank you so much for your transparency and your testimony is because um, Mr. Brooks and ourselves, we feel like it's very important to give back to that generation, give back to the youth. And one of the things that I speak about when I talk to the young men that I mentor and that he speaks about when he goes from schools and he speaks is that the world is not your environment that you're in right now. And a lot of times with young people, I know when I was in school, they didn't have a lot of real estate professionals or business owners actually come in and give us insight into forging your own path and it not necessarily be tied to a higher education or tied right. to military service. And a lot of times for kids, they're looking for some kind of meaning for right. what they're doing. And if they don't look at themselves as a Harvard grad or they don't look at themselves as a um, Captain America, G.I. Joe military person. Right. They just feel like the world has nothing for them. Mm. Right. So I just want to ask you, um, how fulfilling is it when you're able to share your story with younger people that may be traveling down a similar path and for you to just see that small twinkle in the eye to know that your message is resonating? Mm. It's everything. I'm talking to myself when I talk to them. Mm. Uh, this podcast every class I do, every coaching session that I do, I understand that it's all in alignment with training me to be um, the person that I need to be for each of those kids that I get in front of. Mm -hmm. It's all training. Every time I get up in front of somebody and, and speak, it's training me to have the right words to, at the right time mm -hmm. for the right person whose heart is ready. That's why I do what I do. That's why Jen and I are building the business that we build. That's why we're building the platform we build. It's not about the money. Right. It's about understanding that when we can stand up and be an example of excellence, then somebody can see themselves doing the same thing and, and, and going down the same path. And it gives them that hope they need mm -hmm. to maybe make a decision to shift and to shift their life to one of contribution to themselves of loving themselves of seeing themselves as worthy of giving themselves that chance at success right right so you're right that the it's like the kids may see themselves in this microcosm they think mm -hmm. that that's all the world is that's exactly. what i thought absolutely and it's not until they're exposed to something different yes that they're able to go oh wait a minute wait a minute let me sit back for a second what, what, what is this? There's something greater. There's something more. Yeah, this world has all of it. And, uh, and so that's why I go into prison. I teach entrepreneurship. That's why I go into schools and I do after school programs in some of the hardest hit areas. Now, can some people not relate to me because of what I look like? Yeah. And I actually welcome that because right. then I get to grind and come to a common ground where Absolutely. they see me in them and they see themselves in me, yeah. regardless yeah. of what we are on the surface. Absolutely. That is my, so you asking that question, like, what does it mean to me? It means everything to me. And I'm just so, and like I said, it, um, it's so powerful that 
I'm sure there are people that you've partnered with, clients that haven't had the luxury of hearing this story. Yeah. And I'm just glad that you think enough of Mr. Brooks and myself to be here on our platform and to share that story because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt there are so many members of our audience that if they haven't had similar experiences, mm -hmm. there's a young person that they may know or mentor that's um, traveling down a similar path. And if they can't get through to them, they can just point them in the direction of this episode and show them someone like yourself. And they'll be like, that guy? Yeah, yes, yeah. that guy. And Ms. Hall, I ask you too, um, hearing Mr. Sears' testimony, how does it make you feel when you have a chance to speak with young people about not just mortgage, but about life, motherhood, being a wife, that type of thing? Well, you know, before I even got into this industry, I spent 10 years, you know, in education. So I've taught all grade levels, and that was my passion. And I was in my mind thinking, where were you for career day? <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, but I had so many kids that I, it, it was devastating to lose the ones that I've lost, you yes, know, either to incarceration um, or, you know, they, they've lost their lives. And I saw all of the hope. I saw, right, all of the potential. But I, I couldn't figure out how to help them see the things that I saw in them. Mm. And, and that story right there was so powerful. So powerful. I know. I, like, I, I have about five kids in my mind right now that I'm like, I'm going to the IG pages and I'm, I'm sharing it. Yes. Because... I'll be well, all over that. Yeah. They, I know. I know it's going to make a difference. Actually, I have I have a former student right now that he's actually incarcerated mm -hmm. um, in a federal penitentiary. And first of all, when I found out, it blew my mind because I was like, you? Wait, what? Mm -hmm. Wait. Hold on. Like, how? But it just tells you that those life choices, right, it sometimes sure. it, 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 it puts them in a situation that they don't want to get out of. And I'm definitely going to share this story with him because there's still going to be hope for you after this. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what and that's what is most moving about your testimony for me is that I believe not only like the gentleman you're talking about, but hundreds of thousands of other people, they don't feel like they have hope mm -hmm. after making that type of mistake. So for everyone in our audience, Chris, who's moved by your message, by your story, when will they have an opportunity to meet, greet, and interact mm. with Mr. Sears in the flesh or virtually or wherever the next event you have going on, sir? Well, so uh, we do have a uh, ribbon cutting ceremony this afternoon at 430 at our new Katy location. Ah, uh, okay. 231027 Meadows Parkway. Uh, <laughs> so they could do that. Um, but also, I'm going to be a part of a, I'm a panelist on a, uh, at an event in, at the Tomball Convention Center on June 9th. Uh, talking about serving before uh, and giving before receiving. Yeah. Uh, I'll be on that panel with uh, four other real estate brokers and a New York Times bestselling author mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, talking about networking and how to really give to people. Mm -hmm. And that is um, 8.30 to 11.30 a.m. on the 9th. And then mm -hmm. masterclasshouston.com. They can go sign up for free. Uh, I'll be on a panel on the 15th of June, um, the Father's Day panel on uh, on uh, uh, best practices to, okay. for top producers and teams in real estate. And then I'll be at the Teams event uh, put on by Houston Association of Realtors that afternoon. Be there, be square, because we'll be in attendance as well. I want to thank you so much, sir. Um, on behalf of Mr. Larry Brooks and myself, uh, I know how busy Thursdays can be in the real estate industry, especially during lunchtime. So thank you so much. <laughs> Ms. Hall, you know it's always an honor and a pleasure when I have opportunity to interact with you. And you actually like taking me up on the offer to co-host because you promised when you were on that you said you would be there for us. So thank you so much on that behalf as well. Yes. Thank you everyone for the audience for tuning in to the Prime Real Estate Network podcast. On behalf of myself, Rick Davis, and the Texas Real Estate King, Mr. Larry W. Brooks, please follow us on Instagram, YouTube. Check out the Prime Real Estate Network podcast on Spotify as well. This episode will debut this Sunday at 6 p.m. Central on our YouTube station. So, in between now and next Thursday, everyone out there in the audience, please be safe and be blessed.